Hi, this is your host, Apni Bhartiya, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. We are here at KubeCon in Detroit, and today we have with us once again Martin Fan, field CTO of Cloud Casa. Martin, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Again, last time we did a very nice, great uh, demo with you um, virtually, but now we are here in person. Uh, a lot of things that we talked about are being demonstrated here. Uh, before we get into uh, a deeper interview, I would like to hear your uh, kind of thoughts on what has been your experience so far at the event where you see the crowd at the booth, uh, what kind of attendees you're seeing at your booth, sure. what kind of discussion you're hearing? I was at the last KubeCon uh, back in Los Angeles um, in 2021, and you can definitely tell there's a lot more energy around this KubeCon, um, a lot more adoption as users start to leverage Kubernetes within their environments. And um, so the turnout and the enthusiasm for the technology has been great. Um, and we love to see that as well. Now that users are adopting more stateful workloads within the space, uh, we're starting to see a lot more requirements in terms of data protection. And um, so that, that is something that we as a company have specialized in for the past 20 years. Uh, it, this data protection space, and, and it's uh, going to be great for us in telling our data protection story. Right. If you look at data protection, it's kind of, you know, not a crowded space, but there are a lot of players there, and it also kind of becomes sticky, you know, once, you know, you go with one vendor, there is Kasten, is there Trilio, is there a lot of other players are there. So, uh, and, you know, you folks as part of Catalogic, you know, have been around for a while. How do you, uh, you know, not necessarily differentiate, but what additional value that you bring to the market, which you know once again helps customers. Yeah, absolutely. We want to make ourselves as simple as possible to adopt. Um, we offer a backup as a service in our product called Cloud Casa, which doesn't require any infrastructure on the part of our customers or end users or developers. Because what we're seeing now is as users are moving towards these stateful workloads, they need to protect their applications, they need to protect their data. Um, we're seeing developers come to our website to adopt or, or sign in, log in for their free account uh, with Cloud Costs and start running backups on their own. And that's something that they can do very easily within 10 minutes, um, get backups up and running without having the infrastructure team deploy uh, other clusters or deploy other technologies. So we uh, offer ourselves as a backup, as a service. And then as they continue to grow within their Kubernetes journey, um, that's when uh, the fun starts and uh, data will start to grow. Obviously, um, we license off of a data capacity model and we're hoping to convert uh, some of these customers that have come in to use our free version to now back up more critical data within their infrastructure. If you look at this cloud native ecosystem, of course there are three big hyperscalers, AWS, you know, mm -hmm. Google is there, Microsoft Azure is there. Uh, data production is everybody's concern. It doesn't matter whether you are on AWS or Azure or GCP. So talk a bit about what you folks, I mean, we have talked about it last Valencia and then a few days ago also, uh, that what you folks are doing uh, to help customers irrespective of which cloud they're on. So we realize that a lot of people uh, that are deploying Kubernetes uh, today are taking advantage of some of the cloud managed Kubernetes services from the big three, as you had mentioned, AWS, Microsoft, and, and Google. And it's always been our uh, concern and, and objective to follow the market, if you will. So I think back in KubeCon Los Angeles, we had started our cloud native integration with Amazon AWS. Uh, Valencia, we had announced AKS uh, support, and uh, today here in Detroit, we are announcing support for GKE. So we've rounded out uh, the three main players that probably encompass about 80% of the market share uh, within managed Kubernetes services within the cloud, and something that we're very proud of. And uh, in doing so, we want to uh, abstract the complexity of all these different Kubernetes service providers um, from uh, the storage classes that they might be using, the types of uh, functionality that they might be offering from, uh, let's say, um, compute uh, node sizes, um, basically abstract that level of complexity from the end user so that when they want to, let's say, protect their applications or uh, Kubernetes infrastructure, they want to migrate between clouds, uh, they're able to do so uniformly across any cloud provider. So. 
All right. One more thing is that it's not that a customer will be only on AWS or only on it's exactly. multi-cloud hyper-cloud. Mm -hmm. You've got the regional, a lot of reasons why they, it's not that they're running the same workload on different cloud, different workloads, you know, they run on different clouds. So once again, uh, talk about uh, the importance of supporting these, you know, multiple cloud uh, mm -hmm. through integration. So once again, it doesn't really matter which cloud they're leveraging or what service. We want to be as cloud agnostic, storage agnostic as possible. Um, we know that you user requirements will change, um, you know, year over year, month over month, right? And sometimes, uh, you know, weeks over weeks. But um, as users change the requirements for their, their specific cloud vendor, we want to make sure that their user experience for supporting those applications, protecting those applications, do not change. Um, so, and, and that's how we can uh, do that through our platform and cloud casa. Uh, last question before we wrap this up is that uh, once COVID, uh, because of COVID. A lot of companies they have to re, kind of rethink their strategy. Cost cutting was becoming a big you know discussion, and then there is a war going on in Europe. Uh, we are kind of I don't know whether there will be a recession or not, but companies are becoming very very sensitive. So let's also talk about let's not look at it as from the perspective of cost cutting because uh, one thing that we learned from COVID was also that you can become cost effective by sure. doing a lot of things. So talk a bit about how does Cloud Casa help companies in becoming more cost effective as well? A lot of costs nowadays um, resides in, uh, let's say on-prem costs. Users are starting to see the value of cloud and of that uh, awesome compute and storage power that is offered by cloud. You can scale up as much as you want, scale down as much as you want, um, and only pay for what you use. Um, in trying to adopt that same model of usage, uh, we uh, don't really care um, from a uh, infrastructure perspective, how many nodes you're using, the size of your cluster. All we care about really is the amount of data that you're protecting, the critical data that's going to run your enterprise uh, that is going to determine whether or not you stay in business. Um, so being able to secure that data is all that you know, I would care about as a user. I wouldn't care about how many you know, nodes my cluster has spun up because you know, that could be uh, changing on a day-to-day -day basis. What I do care about is the data that is being protected and, and that's something that uh, uh, we've based our licensing model off of in Cloud Casa. But of course, even users that have that might not be there um, from a uh, sizing perspective, right? We also offer our free model so users can, you know, adopt uh, that and take advantage of free backups and managing free backups. And as they grow in size, you know, they can um, then uh, increase the functionality or capacity uh, of Cloud Casa for the amount of data that they're looking to protect. Martin, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, uh, talk about, you know, your presence here and also the importance of you know, offering integration with all those cloud providers. And I, as usual, I'd love to have you back on the show. Thank you. I've had a great time. Thank you.